So the mission here is to get this thing to spark. I got this block all cleaned up. Now I need to work on the flywheel for a bit. There's some marks stamped in the back here that are used for checking the timing. I like to clean those up in case I want to use them in the future. You need to make sure there's no rust in this tapered hole here. And you want to put this wavy washer on behind the flywheel. That's supposed to make sure that magnet is seated. So you want to do a visual inspection, make sure you got a gap between the magnet and the laminations there. And that's in two places. I'm going to wiggle all this stuff here just to make sure nothing's loose. And you can use a screwdriver to make sure your magnet still works. This nut has a shoulder on one side, and I would expect that to go against the washer, but the lock washer marks are on the other side. Well, it's not going on very far. Try this side. Nope, okay, got to do something about that. Okay, it's not the nut. Guess I gotta work on the crankshaft. 
This is a thread repair file. It has teeth that fits in the threads and it has a number of different sizes on it. So you have to find the size that says 18 so that you can use it on this 5 8 18 thread. And then you want your thread file to be parallel with the thread you're working on. So it's going to be slightly crooked from being perpendicular to the shaft because of the angle of the thread. I'm not going to bother using a torque wrench on this yet because I just want to see if it sparks first. So I'm going to snug up the nut with the wrench against my leg here. I'm going to try to use this old spark plug first just to see if it'll work. The Kohler book says the spark plug gap should be 25 thousandths. This is everything I need to get the points back on. Cover looks good. Push rod looks good. I'm going to try to use the old points. So I'm going to take these points all the way apart because I want to get a good look at each contact surface. And while I got them apart I can clean all the pieces. I need to clean some of these areas I couldn't get to on the wire wheel. Years ago I learned that points had some sort of plating on them that you had to clean carefully. But what I learned from the local magneto repair guy is you just need to get in there and put a new surface on top. So get rid of any pits and make them nice and rounded so the contact surfaces touch in one spot.
put some grease on your push rod before you put it in. I forgot the little flat washer here, so I got to do that over. When you put the points base on there, push it all the way back when you snug it up so it won't be touching the movable arm when you're trying to find the high spot on the cam. I'm going to put some grease in there where the push rod contacts the points arm. And some on the stem here that the points arm goes on. Here you got to hold that spring down or you won't get the screw lined up with the hole. I'm going to close up this wire guide a little bit. You want your wire to be trapped but not pinched. Rotate the crankshaft till you find the high spot on the points cam. And then you can move the points base within range to make the final adjustment. They give you these little slots so you can move the points base with your screwdriver. You want to have your screw snug so it only moves when you want it to move. The points gap on these engines is 20 thousandths. You want to feel a light drag on your feeler gauge when you pull it through there. And you don't want to see the points arm open up any when you do it. I'm going to clean this spark plug tip. And I'm going to pinch these fingers together so it snaps on there good. This rubber tie down strap is going to hold the spark plug against the head so I get a good ground. I modified an old extension from a socket set so it would fit this half inch drill and then I don't have to pull it by hand to see if it'll spark. You can tell by the sunshine here it's a different day. I need to get some oil in this thing before I turn it too much. On these Kohler engines with the threaded type plug dipstick, you want to take it out and clean it. Put it in until the plug gets down to the shoulder of the crankcase. Don't screw it back in. In case you want to pause the video and read that out of the book, here's a screenshot of it.
with the sun shining the way it is, I want to close the garage door so I can see the spark. Well, that's pretty decent there. I have a new spark plug here. I want to change it and see what that looks like. Alright, I like that better. So I'm going to use this new spark plug. Now that it sparks good, I can put the cover back on. I want to be able to torque the flywheel nut without the crankshaft moving. So this is my setup for getting that done. Got the belt pulley clamped in the vise here. The torque specs for the flywheel nut are in the Kohler book here. And it says 45 to 55 foot-pounds for this model. I'm going to use a beam type torque wrench. They work fairly well. Just need to make sure there's no damage. The needle has to be straight so it can go through that slot and not touch anything. And it's pointing pretty close to zero. These have a pivoting handle. So that needs to be working properly and not broken. It works better if you don't use an extension on your socket. While you're putting pressure on it, you need to make sure the needle's not touching either side of the slot. And you need to make sure that your handle's pivoting in the center all the time. I want to run a tap through these holes to clean them. Should have done that before I put the flywheel on. Since I didn't, I have to use a bottoming tap on this side so I can get threads to the bottom of the hole with it being that close to the flywheel. This particular one has already been stripped and drilled out oversize to a 5 16 bolt. The one over on this side is still the original size of a quarter twenty. And it's farther from the flywheel so I can use a regular tap. Somebody put a bolt in this one. I'm not going to try to change that. But I'm going to clean the threads with this threading die. Well, that's as far as I'm going this time. And here's what it looks like. I was able to get a good spark out of it, which is very good. 
because you can't get parts for that type of ignition system. Feels like it's got good compression and it makes the right noises when you turn it over. I just want to get it running to see if it's got any major issues. Alright, that's it.